as you cook to save time and stay ahead of the mess. But scrubbing still takes time. Now there's Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray, the faster, easier way to clean as you go. It cleans grease five times faster. On easy messes, just spray, wipe, and rinse. On tough messes, the spray-activated suds cut through grease on contact without water. Just wipe and rinse. Get dishes done faster. Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray, now available in free and clear. Evil dies tonight. Look for real. Woo! This is stabbed. She was stabbed. Nice job, dude. Thanks, man. Ray? Oh. <laughs> He's dead, Mom. Well, it wasn't all horror on the set of Halloween Kills. You can go to ET Online for the full blooper reel in the movie. Happening now. Three new free COVID testing sites are opening with the city's seal of approval, but with so many sites in the city, how do you know the one you're at is legit? We're going to tell you what to look for next. The cold front has already moved through town. I'll be back in a bit to let you know how cold it's going to get tonight and who needs to prepare for a freeze and a look ahead to the weekend, which contains a little bit of moisture. See you in a bit. Hundreds of thousands of products are under recall after the deaths of several people. We're talking adult bed rails, bunk beds, and portable air conditioners. Coming up, what you'll want to watch out for. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, Metro Health updating our current COVID numbers in Bear County. The daily change, 2,358. The seven-day moving average, 3,116. There are six new deaths to report, bringing the total number to 15 in the last seven days. And there are 625 patients in the hospital with COVID. That's up from just yesterday. 142 people in the intensive care, 52 people on ventilators. Three new city sponsored testing sites are opening up. The first of those sites run by Community Labs. They began testing this morning and you can see there was quite a line. 2000 people have been tested at this one site so far today. That is a lot of traffic, but needed. And two more sites are going to open up in the next few weeks. But while these are getting the city's stamp of approval, Metro Health spokesperson says that there are two other testing sites that are now under investigation right now for possibly operating fraudulently. Yeah, in the meantime, Garrett Berger tells us what you should look out for to make sure the testing site you visit is actually a legitimate one. As San Antonio COVID cases rise, demand for testing has too. So today's opening of a new site at Alamo College's district headquarters was a welcome development. Metro Health will now be able to provide three more large testing sites to our residents with more on the way. But Metro Health is also warning people to be careful because some sites may not be legitimate. Metro Health has been made aware this week about fake testing sites popping up around San Antonio and around Texas. In some cases, their main interest is in your personal information, your date of birth, your uh, medical insurance. And scammers, as Metro Health's medical director calls them, aren't running tests correctly. So you could have COVID and test negative, not because of any inherent problem with antigen tests, but because they ran the test wrong. Wu cautions people to look for warning signs, like no logos on the materials. The site isn't affiliated with a local medical facility or laboratory, or it's set up at a strange spot, like a sidewalk. There's an upfront cost, if that, that's a, especially a red flag. If you suspect a site, she says to ask questions, check their website, or call them. And Metro Health says the sites listed on the city's COVID website have been checked and are legitimate. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. So what if you come across one of these illegitimate sites? Well, you can report a fraudulent site at reportfraud.ftc.gov. UTSA, the newest university to postpone in-person classes for the spring semester in this area. The university says classes will meet virtually until February 7th. Now, most of the instructional laboratories, studios like art, music, and other performance-based classes, ROTC, internships, and other classes that require hands-on instruction will remain in person. You can read more about the new changes at UTSA and other universities on our website, ksat.com. And we are continuing to see absences in several local school districts. Today, NISD reporting 1,546 staff members called out. The total number of substitutes needed on campus, 1,195. The fill rate at 58%. Now yesterday, 
13% of the student population was absent. We don't know what the number is today, if it went up or down. We'll find that out tomorrow. NEISD says yesterday and today 720 staff members were out. That includes 491 teachers out yesterday. 576 teachers are out today. 89% of students attended school yesterday. About 88% of students attended school today. Health officials reminding people to get their booster shots if you're 12 years or older. This after the CDC signed off on boosters for younger kids just yesterday. Doctors say hospitalizations are increasing across the country. They're starting to see a trend in breakthrough patients or those who have been vaccinated against COVID-19. We actually have the data that says the people that are showing up in the hospital that who have been vaccinated uh, are unfortunately uh, not boosted. Boosters work um, because we're not seeing a lot of fully boosted people showing up in the hospital. Right now, the U.S. is averaging more than 550,000 new cases a day. Nearly 126,000 people currently hospitalized with COVID. The San Antonio police are looking for a shooting suspect. They say two men were walking along Mila Vista near Calabra Road about two when a black vehicle with four men inside drove up right beside them. Police say a man in the passenger seat fired shots in the direction of the men who were walking. One of them was hit and taken to the hospital. He's expected to be OK. Police do say the other man ran from the scene. They're not quite sure if he was injured. The suspects got away. Two San Antonio women have been on have been arrested rather on robbery charges in San Marcos. Take a look at Lindsay Garza and Emily Gonzalez. The San Marcos Police Department says the two went into a restaurant there. They fired a weapon and demanded cash. They then drove off and led officers on a high speed chase. Eventually they crashed into a concrete barrier on I-35. They tried to run off, but they didn't get away. The weapon and the stolen money recovered. They now face several charges, including aggravated robbery, evading arrest, and tampering with evidence. Do you recognize this guy? Crime Stoppers wants to find him. They need help in identifying him as well. They say he may have sexually assaulted a woman he helped get gas last month. It happened on the I-10 access road near Camp Bolas. The 27-year-old woman says she ran out of gas there, and a man she did not know pulled over and offered to help. They drove to a nearby gas station. They got the gasoline and drove back to her vehicle. But that's where police say he sexually assaulted her. If you know who this guy is or you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. New at five, bedside dangers. Hundreds of thousands of portable bed rails used to keep adults safe being recalled tonight. Sadly, this comes after the deaths of four elderly people. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with the latest on the recalls on products that you may actually have in your home. Bed rails are supposed to protect, but now Compass Health Brands is recalling more than 100,000 Carex brand portable bed rails for adults after three reported deaths. All seniors who became trapped between the rail and the bed and suffocated. And there's more. Essential Medical Supply is also recalling 272,000 of its endurance hand bed rails because of the same danger. One person has died. All of these bed rails were sold at medical supply companies on Amazon and Walmart.com. If you have one, stop using it and contact the company for instructions and a refund. Bunk bed warning. Longwood Forest is recalling nearly 40,000 angel line bunk beds with angled ladders. The hazard is a possible gap between the ladder and the bed. A two year old boy died when he became trapped. These were sold online at Walmart, Amazon, and Wayfair. AC fire danger. Royal Sovereign is recalling more than 33,000 portable air conditioners after reports of 11 fires or smoke. One fire was deadly. Owners should unplug the units and contact the manufacturer. These were sold at several major retailers, including Costco and Home Depot. And parent alert, Karma Spar is recalling these two-in-one and three-in-one infant bath seats. They don't meet stability standards and can too easily tip over while baby is in the bathtub. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 
We started our day in the upper 30s by the afternoon, we made it up to 68 for the high temperature very briefly at one o'clock and then temperatures fell thereafter. Still 81 in Eagle Pass there. You're waiting on the cooler air, but it's not far away. 66 Del Rio. 51 West Kerrville, 53 in shirts, and you look locally. We're 56 Windcrest, 53 Canyon Lake, and closer to 60 near Lavernia. But temperatures falling off pretty quickly this evening. Clear sky, a little breezy out there right now, but the wind will diminish overnight tonight. By midnight, we'll be in the mid 30s. I'll be back in a bit to talk about who's going to see a freeze, how cold it's going to get, and where. Coming right up, Sam, along with a weekend forecast, including some rebounding temps. All right, Adam, thanks very much. You are watching a situation downtown. This is at 35 at 37. Good news here. It appears uh, that is going to be uh, cleared up here as we uh, head over and get a wider uh, view of this traffic flowing well in this area, but you can see uh, the tow truck there. So hopefully that gets out of the way soon. Looking at 35 inside of Loop 410, some delays uh, after a crash at Wiener that has been cleared, but still 15 minutes northbound from downtown to Loop 410. Steve, Ursula. Thank you, Samuel. It's been one year since a group of President Donald Trump supporters showed up to the U.S. Capitol in protest of the 2020 election and a deadly riot ensued. Today, a moment of silence held in the House chamber in honor of the five people who died and dozens of others injured. Today, President Joe Biden delivering a speech from the same place where those rioters invaded the Capitol. He criticized all involved for threatening American democracy, including former President Donald Trump. They weren't looking to uphold the will of the people. They were looking to deny the will of the people. They were looking to uphold. They weren't looking to uphold a free and fair election. They were looking to overturn one. The protest initially called to disrupt the transfer of power after the 2020 election. A total of five people died. Many others injured hundreds of people, including some from San Antonio, faced criminal charges because of their actions. Alleged comments from a juror following the sex trafficking conviction of Ghislaine Maxwell may result in a new trial. Her defense attorneys asking for a new one right now. Yeah, the juror allegedly told media outlets he was sexually abused as a child and said his experience swayed some of the other jurors during deliberations. Maxwell convicted on five federal charges for her role in sex trafficking of minors with Jeffrey Epstein. Prosecutors are now asking the judge to bring in the juror for questioning, saying that the comments merit attention by the court. Well, the three men convicted of murder in the case of Ahmad Arbery expected to be sentenced tomorrow. These are the men who in February of 2020 chased down Arbery while he was jogging and ended up shooting him. In November, Travis McMichael was convicted on all charges. His father, Gregory McMichael, and their neighbor, William Bryan, all convicted of three counts of felony murder and one count of aggravated assault. The three face life in prison. A judge will decide whether to include the possibility of parole. If you plan to buy a home this year, you might want to act now. Experts say mortgage rates will continue to increase through 2022. What relief they say it could bring to the housing market coming up. If you're traveling anytime soon, you might be familiar with carry on restrictions, but the TSA has a reminder after some folks tried to bring prohibited items on board. What you need to know next. I'm Myra Arthur in the newsroom with a look at stories that we are working on for six o'clock. We start in a Bear County courtroom with the trial of a man accused of murdering his own cousin. Testimony today centered around body camera footage of Edison Kataban being questioned in the back of a patrol car on the night the shooting happened. We'll show you what played out in court. Plus, where were you when you saw this? Angry mobs storming the U.S. Capitol one year ago today. You probably remember. And so does the former mayor of Laredo, who is also a former FBI agent and U.S. Capitol police officer. I was so upset, uh, disgusted, angered, and I'm like, what's going on? He protected those same halls that were attacked. How he is remembering the anniversary of the Capitol riots. That is some of what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock. We'll see you then. Thank you, Myra.
The TSA with a reminder for travelers, you cannot bring guns, gun parts, or bullets as a carry-on. This week, TSA Southwest ran into some instances where travelers tried to carry on some of these items. They say yesterday there was a passenger who tried to bring a gun on a flight at San Antonio International Airport. Today, another passenger tried carrying 51 rounds of ammo into a plane at Dallas Fort Worth International. The TSA says these can be uh, checked inside of a bag, but only if they are locked inside a hard sided container. When you are checking your bag, the TSA says you should also tell the airline employee that there is a firearm or ammunition inside. All the guns must be unloaded. In 2021, a big year for the housing market, but just six days into the new year, we're already seeing even higher mortgage rates. This week, the 30-year fixed rate average, 3.22%. That's up from 3.11% last week. The National Association of Realtors estimating they'll reach 3.7% by the end of the year. And while this could make owning a home more challenging, it could slow down the hyper-competitive housing market that we've seen, certainly in San Antonio and across the country. Taking a look outside with live cam, uh, we had hit our high temperature early this afternoon. We have been going farther and farther down as the day goes by. Yeah, normally we uh, top out, you know, max our temperature out about this time of day, maybe an hour ago. But instead, it came a little earlier today because of the cold front that recently moved through. And that cold front's already dropping temperatures gradually from north to south. It's still warm in some parts of our area. Take you, we'll show you the temperature spread in a moment. Another freeze tonight for most of us, not everybody. Temperatures rebound into the weekend. And then another cold front for the end of the weekend that hits about midday on Sunday, kind of like today, middle of the day, and then some changes happen. All right, look across the state. Look at these readings. 21 in Amarillo, Lubbock right now at 30, Abilene 32. Meanwhile, 55 in San Antonio, Del Rio at 70, Laredo 83, Brownsville at 80 degrees. Clearly there is a cold front that's been moving through. And this north wind here, you see these streamlines on the map, indicates the direction of the wind coming out of the north, going to the south, and that's pushing that colder air southward. So Carrizo Springs 81 for now. Catula 76 for now. Your temperatures will be dropping pretty quickly. I mean, just head up to Pleasanton at 64, Hondo 59. Already a pretty sharp distance or difference over a short distance. So let's talk about tomorrow morning. Most of us, a light freeze for about three or four hours. In the hill country, you'll have a hard freeze. Kerrville 24, Fredericksburg 23, San Antonio about 30 degrees, Uvalde 28. But once you get along the coastal plain, Beeville, Goliad, Victoria, I don't think you have to really worry about a freeze. Even Catula just barely above freezing come tomorrow morning. Helotus 30. Meanwhile, Leon Springs, Timberwood Park 28. Bernie, we're thinking about 25. And even New Braunfels 28 to start the day tomorrow. Elmendorf just barely hitting freezing. By the afternoon tomorrow, we're only going to make it into the 50s. We're talking low to mid 50s for most of us, so not much of a warm up throughout the day with increasing clouds. But I do want to talk about the changes in morning temperatures. We do have that freeze for most of us tomorrow morning. But by the weekend, you don't even have to worry about it. Even next week, we just have to watch Tuesday. Tuesday, there's that slight chance. We'll be about 34, we're thinking. But you know, give it some time, and there is a potential we could have a brief freeze. So other than tonight, we're looking freeze-free for the foreseeable future. Wind gusts right now between 20 and 25 miles per hour. We're noticing that north wind behind the cold front. A little breezy. Not overwhelming, but the wind will be pumping the brakes overnight. First thing tomorrow when that colder air is really in place, you're not even going to notice the wind. So not even really a wind chill factor out there. I want to talk about the big picture. Not much happening around Texas. This was another dry cold front for us. No showers associated with it, but you can see the jet stream just by looking at the big picture. See these clouds coming into the Pacific Northwest, precipitation there, and then it dives southward over the southeastern U.S., and that's where we have the storm track. No coincidence, that's where all the precipitation is, and even as snow as, snow as far south as parts of Tennessee and even into Kentucky. We could obviously use some moisture. The latest drought monitor updated today indicates 80% of Texas is in drought. Okay, so it's just getting worse. We could use the moisture right now it doesn't look like any big relief 
from the drought. We're abnormally dry in San Antonio, but right on the edge of the first category of having a drought. The highest drought is south of Highway 90 south of San Antonio. We'll have a little bit of moisture in the weekend. Tomorrow, just some increasing clouds. By Saturday, a few sprinkles hit or miss very light showers in the morning and just that dampness Saturday. But tomorrow, increasing clouds 30 in the morning, 53 the high. Saturday, we start the day damp, fog, drizzle, a few sprinkles, but nothing good to show for it in the 70s this weekend and then cooling to 60 again next week behind the next front. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, one day after a big win, the Spurs lose some key players. Greg. Yeah, and this, this is not good because these are four very key players on this team, and they're having to sign more players to 10-day contracts to have, be able to have enough players to play tomorrow night's game. When we come back, we'll let you know who's latest in COVID protocols for the Spurs and for the Dallas Cowboys, more COVID casualties as well. Coming up. If there was ever more evidence that DeJounte Murray should be voted to this year's All-Star team was last night in Boston where the Spurs beat the Celtics in their four-game losing streak and scored their first win on their current seven-game road trip. Murray had missed the previous five games in the NBA's health and safety protocols and were just one and four in those games that he was sidelined. Not tonight, last night. Murray starts off by assisting others, finding Jock Landale under the basket for the hoop and the harm. That caps off a Spurs 10-2 run in the second quarter and a six-point lead. Final seconds of the first half, Devin Vassell, who had the hot hand, nails a corner three, and the Spurs are up two at the half. In the third quarter, the Spurs go on an 8-0 run, fueled by Derek White to give the silver and black and six-point lead. Just three going into the fourth quarter. White would finish his 17. That's when DeJounte is able to get into the lane, gets the ball to fall, and lead the Spurs with 22. But this will come down to the final play. Spurs up two the ball, but Landale turns it over, throwing it right to Jalen Brown. He heads for the hoop, but he can't get the layup to fall. The Spurs survived 99-97. What was it like for DeJounte sitting out five games? It was really tough because this, that, this is my life, you know, besides you know, my daughter, my family, and friends and stuff. Uh, you know, this is my life. You know, this is what I do on a daily basis. Uh, so, you know, having the game taken away from me, you know, for the time it was, you just got to live with it and whatever and, you know, realize that they're just trying to keep everybody healthy and safe, uh, you know, so I respected it and, you know, what can I do besides look forward to coming back. DeJounte's back, but they're missing four other players now, including Keldon Johnson, Derek White, Thad Young, and Devin Vassell added to COVID protocols. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The COVID outbreak continues to hit the Cowboys' heart. It was confirmed today by head coach Mike McCarthy that star rookie linebacker Micah Parsons is out for Saturday's game against the Eagles and will not travel to Philadelphia. You can add left tackle Tyron Smith and cornerback Anthony Brown to the list of players now on the COVID-19 reserve list out for that game as well. There has been speculation that Parsons might have exposed himself to the virus when he attended the Mavericks game on Monday. Quarterback Dak Prescott was asked if that should be a wake-up call for the team. We saw the numbers go up here in, in the in the past few weeks. So I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I've told y'all before. We just got to be cautious and uh, protecting yourself. Trying to stay stay away from from the big crowds, limiting the people you're around, and um, just doing all the things you can to necessarily control it. Something that we we obviously don't uh, have have, a, have our fingers on and have control of this thing, or even an idea of, of how not to to get it right now. So just do the best you can to prevent yourself. All right, kickoff against the Eagles live on KSAT 12 Saturday night, except for 7:15 p.m. And they may be on another two starters on defense they're questionable right now we'll let you know about that coming up on the night beat so that video that picture was micah parsons at the mavericks game yes so we can blame mark cuban absolutely yeah always blame me for idea. everything yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back thanks so much for watching the news at five with us world news up next we'll see you back here at six